Welcome to my channel, where there is no mercy or comfort. If you love fear, you're in the wrong place and risking your life because what I present is aimed only at dear hearts. What I'm about to tell you is not innocent things, but sick things. I will talk about the terrifying and frightening things I have found in the world, or within myself, or in this video. But before I begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button to receive notifications of more scary videos. And if you dare, leave a comment below the video and tell me your opinion. But be careful, you may regret it. Now, without further delay, let's delve into the world of horror, but don't expect to come out unscathed. Scary Story What if the most dangerous predators on Earth were not humans, but ancient reptiles with psychic powers? What if they could bend reality to their will, manipulate minds, and cause havoc wherever they went? What if they had a sinister plan to unleash a new era of terror on the world? This is the nightmare scenario that unfolds in the thrilling tale of Pinkard and Bowden, two malevolent Thrinaxodons, who have escaped from a secret facility and are on the run in Texas. As they evade the authorities, they encounter a host of enemies and allies, from Nazi agents to temporal guardians, from rogue hackers to loyal friends. Their journey is a roller coaster of suspense, horror, and action as they leave a trail of blood and destruction behind them. Will they succeed in their evil mission? Or will they be stopped by the forces of good? Find out in this gripping story that will keep you on the edge of your seat until the very end. The sun was setting over the Texas Hill Country, casting a golden glow over the fields of bluebonnets and the winding roads. A Chevy Tahoe was speeding along one of those roads, its engine roaring and its tires screeching. Inside the vehicle, two figures were hunched over a laptop, their eyes fixed on the screen. They were Pinkard and Bowden, two Thrinaxodons, who had stolen the Tahoe and its cargo from a government convoy earlier that day. Thrinaxodons were an extinct genus of synodonts, mammal-like reptiles that lived in the Triassic period about 250 million years ago. They were about the size of a large dog, with long snouts, sharp teeth, and short limbs. They were also highly intelligent, social, and adaptable, and had evolved a form of telepathy and telekinesis that allowed them to communicate and manipulate their environment. They were the ancestors of mammals, but they had also developed a dark and twisted nature driven by greed, ambition, and cruelty. Pinkard and Bowden were not ordinary Thrinaxodons, however. They were the result of a secret experiment conducted by a rogue faction of the Temporal Protection Agency, or TPA, a covert organization that monitored and regulated the flow of time. The TPA had captured several Thrinaxodons from the past, and brought them to the present, where they had enhanced their psychic abilities and trained them to be agents of chaos. Their goal was to use the three Naxodons to disrupt the timeline and create a new world order under their control. Pinkard and Bowden had been the most successful and ruthless of the three Naxodons, carrying out several missions across time and space from assassinating historical figures to sabotaging crucial events. They had also developed a bond of loyalty and friendship, as well as a shared vision of their own destiny. They had grown tired of being pawns of the TPI and had decided to rebel and pursue their own agenda. 
They had learned of a secret project that the TPA was working on, involving a device that could alter the fabric of reality itself. They had resolved to steal the device and use it to create a world where they would be the supreme rulers and where humans and other mammals would be their slaves. The device was hidden inside the Chevy Tahoe along with other state-of-the-art computer equipment. Pinkard and Bowden had managed to hijack the Tahoe from a TPA convoy that was transporting it to a secure location. They had used the telekinetic powers to cause a massive pileup on the highway, and then had taken control of the driver's mind, forcing him to drive away from the scene. They had killed the driver and dumped his body in a ditch, and then had taken over the Tahoe. They had hacked into the laptop and accessed the device, which was a small metallic cube with a red button on it. They had activated the device and had entered a series of commands that would trigger a massive reality shift in a few hours. They had chosen Texas as their target because they liked its vast and diverse landscapes, its rich and colorful history, and its rebellious and independent spirit. They had also chosen it because it was the home of their arch nemesis, Agent Carter, the leader of the TPA's Texas branch, and the man who had been hunting them for years. Agent Carter was a tall and muscular man with short blonde hair and blue eyes. He was a veteran of the TPI and had seen and done things that most people could not imagine. He had dedicated his life to protecting the timeline and preventing temporal anomalies, paradoxes, and disasters. He had also developed a personal vendetta against Pinkard and Bowden after they had killed his partner and best friend, Agent Jones, in a brutal attack. He had sworn to capture or kill the Thrinaxodons and had pursued them across time and space always one step behind them. He had finally tracked them down to Texas and had assembled a team of agents to intercept them. He had been on their tail when they had caused the pileup on the highway and had narrowly escaped the carnage. He had followed them to the hill country and was closing in on them. Pinkard and Bowden were aware of Carter's pursuit, but they were not afraid. They were confident in their abilities and their plan and they were eager to face their enemy and finish him off. They had also prepared a few surprises for him and his team, using their telekinetic powers to set up traps and obstacles along the road. They had also contacted a few of their allies, who were waiting for them in Austin, the capital of Texas, and their final destination. They had everything under control, or so they thought. As they approached a sharp curve on the road, they saw a sign that read, Welcome to Austin. They smiled and exchanged a telepathic high five. They were almost there. They turned the curve and then their smiles vanished. They saw a roadblock ahead with several TP vehicles and agents blocking their way. They recognized Carter among them, standing in the middle of the road, holding a rifle. He had a grim, and determined expression on his face. He had finally caught up with them. Pinkard and Bowden cursed and slammed on the brakes, but it was too late. They were too close to the roadblock, and they had no time to turn around or find another way. They had only one option, to fight their way through. They activated their telekinetic powers and prepared to unleash hell on their enemies. They did not know that Carter had also prepared for this moment, and that he had a few tricks up his sleeve. He had anticipated their move, and had set up a countermeasure that would neutralize their psychic abilities. He had also contacted a few of his allies, who were waiting for him in Austin, and who had a special interest in the three Naxodons. They were Baron Schaefer, and his Nazi cronies, who had traveled from the past to the present, and who had a sinister plan of their own. The stage was set for a showdown that would decide the fate of Texas, and perhaps the world. The three Naxodons, 
and the TPA agents stared at each other, ready to fire. The sun dipped below the horizon, and the night fell. The device in the Tahoe ticked closer to the zero hour. The reality shift was about to begin. The three Maxadons and the TPA agents opened fire at the same time, unleashing a barrage of bullets and psychic blasts. The air was filled with noise and sparks as metal and mind clashed. The Tahoe was hit by several shots and its windows shattered. The laptop and the device were damaged, but still functional. Pinkard and Bowden ducked behind the seats and returned fire with their telekinetic powers. They hurled rocks, debris, and even cars at their enemies, trying to break through the roadblock. They also used their telepathy to confuse and distract the agents, sending them false images and sounds. Carter and his team were prepared for this, however. They had equipped themselves with special helmets that blocked the Thrinaxodon's psychic attacks and had set up a jamming device that interfered with their telekinetic abilities. They also had superior firepower and numbers and had taken cover behind their vehicles and barricades. They aimed and shot at the Tahoe, hoping to disable it or kill its occupants. Carter was especially focused on Pinkard and Bowden and tried to spot them through the broken windows. He wanted to end their reign of terror once and for all. The battle raged on for several minutes, with neither side gaining an advantage. The Tahoe was riddled with bullet holes, but still running. The roadblock was damaged, but still standing. The casualties were mounting, but the survivors were still fighting. It seemed like a stalemate until a new factor entered the equation. A loud roar echoed through the night, followed by a series of explosions. A jet fighter flew over the scene, dropping bombs and missiles on the roadblock. The TP vehicles and agents were blown to pieces and the road was cleared. The jet fighter then circled back and fired a missile at the Tahoe. The Tahoe was hit and flipped over. It landed on its roof and burst into flames. The jet fighter then flew away, leaving behind a scene of devastation and smoke. Pinkard and Bowden had survived the missile strike thanks to their telekinetic shields. They had also managed to grab the laptop and the device and had crawled out the burning Tahoe. They were injured and bleeding, but still alive. They looked around and saw the carnage that the jet fighter had caused. They wondered who had sent it and why. They did not have to wonder for long, however. A black SUV pulled up next to them and four men stepped out. They wore black suits and sunglasses and carried guns. They had swastika tattoos on their arms and spoke with German accents. They were Baron Schiefer and his Nazi cronies who had traveled from the past to the present and who had a sinister plan of their own. Baron Schaefer was a high-ranking officer of the SS, the Nazi elite force. He was a tall and thin man with blonde hair and blue eyes. He was also a brilliant and ruthless scientist who had been working on a secret project involving time travel and reality manipulation. He had learned of the TPA and the Thrynaxodons and had seen them as a threat and an opportunity. He had decided to steal the device and use it to create a world where the Nazis had won world war, I, I, and where he would be the Efferer. He had allied himself with Carter, who had agreed to help him in exchange for his assistance in capturing the three Naxodons. Carter had betrayed the TPA and had given Schieffer the information and the means to track down and attack the three Naxodons. 
Schaefer had sent the jet fighter to destroy the roadblock and the Tahoe, and had then arrived to claim the device. Schaefer walked up to Pinkard and Bowden and smiled. He said, Greetings, my reptilian friends. I hope you don't mind if I take this from you. He reached for the device, but Pinkard and Bowden reacted quickly. They used their telekinetic powers to push Schiffer away and to lift the laptop and the device. They then ran towards the SUV, hoping to escape. Schaefer and his men fired at them, but missed. Pinkard and Bowden reached the SUV and got in. They started the engine and drove away. Schaefer and his men got back in their SUV and followed them. The chase was on. Pinkard and Bowden drove as fast as they could, heading towards downtown Austin. They hoped to find a safe place to hide and to complete their plan. They checked the laptop and saw that the device was still working and that the reality shift was still on schedule. They only had to wait a few more minutes and then their dream would come true. They smiled and cheered and ignored the pain and the blood. They were almost there. Schaefer and his men were not far behind, however. They had also checked the laptop and had seen the device and a reality shift. They realized what the three Naxodons were trying to do and they were determined to stop them. They also wanted to take the device and use it for their own purposes. They accelerated and closed the gap between them and the three Naxodons. They fired at the SUV, trying to disable it or kill its occupants. They shouted and cursed and vowed to catch them. The three Naxodons and the Nazis raced through the streets of Austin, causing chaos and panic. They ran red lights, crashed into other cars, and dodged pedestrians and police. They exchanged shots and psychic blasts, damaging buildings and signs. They attracted the attention of the media and the public, who watched the spectacle with shock and awe. They did not know who they were or what they were doing. They did not know that the fate of the world was at stake. The three Naxodons and the Nazis reached the center of downtown Austin, where the Texas State Capitol was located. The Capitol was a large and imposing building, made of pink granite and topped with a dome. It was the seat of the Texas government and a symbol of the state's history and pride. It was also the epicenter of the reality shift, as the three Naxodons had chosen it as their target. They had programmed the device to alter the capital and everything around it, according to their vision. They had envisioned a world where the capital was a palace, where they were the kings, and where humans and other mammals were their subjects. They had envisioned a world where Texas was their kingdom, and where they ruled with an iron fist. The three Naxodons drove towards the capital, hoping to reach it before the reality shift began. They wanted to witness their triumph and to enjoy their victory. They wanted to see their enemies fall and to hear their screams. They wanted to see their world come to life and to live in it forever. The Nazis followed them hoping to stop them before the reality shift began. They wanted to seize the device and to use it for their own ends. They wanted to see the three Naxodons die and to take their place. They wanted to see their world come to life and to live in it forever. The three Naxodons and the Nazis arrived at the capital and parked their SUVs in front of it. They got out and faced each other. They held the laptop and the device and pointed their guns and their minds. They were ready for the final confrontation. 
they did not notice that the capital and everything around it was starting to change. The reality shift had begun. The capital began to glow and then to morph. Its shape and color changed and new features appeared. The dome became a spire and the granite became marble. The windows became arches and the doors became gates. The flags became banners and the statues became idols. The capital became a palace and the palace became a temple. The temple of Pinkard and Bowden, the Thrinaxodon gods. The surroundings also changed and new things appeared. The streets became roads and the roads became paths. The cars became carts and the carts became wagons. The buildings became houses and the houses became huts. The signs became symbols and the symbols became rooms. The people became animals and the animals became slaves. The slaves of Pinkord and Darden, Mestors. The Thrinaxodons and the Nazis did not notice the changes as they were too focused on each other. They did not notice that they were also changing and that new things were happening to them. Their clothes became robes and their robes became rags. Their guns became swords and their swords became daggers. Their minds became dull and their dullness became madness. Their madness of Pinkard and Bowden, the three Naxodon curses. The three Naxodons and the Nazis attacked each other and a melee ensued. They stabbed and slashed and bit and clawed. They screamed and howled and laughed and cried. They bled and died and lived and killed. They killed each other and themselves. They killed Pinkard and Bowden, the three Naxodon traitors. The laptop and the device fell to the ground and were forgotten. They were still working and still shifting reality. They shifted reality until there was no reality left. They shifted reality until there was only Pinkard and Bowden. Pinkard and Bowden, the three Naxodon reality. The end. Thank you for joining us for this spine tingling story. We hope you found it both thrilling and thought provoking. If you enjoyed this video, please consider participating in our channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing it with your friends. Your support goes a long way in helping us create more engaging content for you. Goodbye, and may you always tread carefully in the world of the unknown.